What's up, baby dolls? We're going to go through my Bitcoin and Ethereum targets. And we're also going to give a special shout out to a main character in crypto. We found out Ansem, friends, has potentially $150 million made from crypto. Absolute boss amounts. There's a lot of people with a lot of rumors and speculation. Don't worry about it, friends. But there's a lot of lessons to learn when you look at this, okay? So first, let's start with the big macro prices. You probably want to look at Bitcoin. All we've done is draw a FIB level from the top to the bottom. All right, we do a FIB extension from the top to the bottom. And then we get the 2.618 is 155K. Now, in the previous cycle for Bitcoin, let's actually bring it up right now. That is diminished. So what I'm going to show you is see that price chart that we just looked at friends it's right here well if we go back to what it did in 2021 if you want to have a look at it from here to the top to the bottom we hit around the three the three extension you see that so we've been diminishing so what i did was for our cycle I'll go well what if we only hit like a two or a one on the extension all right so what i've gone through and show you a two is 155k so towards 155k, that is the Bitcoin price target. And I pretty much, I've got high confidence it'll hit there. Now, you know, you might also wonder, hmm, what about the 100k? Because that's a nice round number. Yeah, look, 100k, it seems like the biggest retail mid-curve trap of all time. It just seems like such a round number that every retailer, when it hits there, they're going to get out and try it front run it. 80, 90, 95, or it pokes above 100 and comes back down. Like, friends, I could just see it already. I could already see it doing this. Like, oh, it's over. And everyone gets out. And then pfft, they get back in. <laughs> and they buy back in on the second one. I just, I don't know why. I just feel it, man. Just It seems too obvious. Sell at 100K. And everybody understands market cap, the money printer, and everything else. I mean, we're just guessing at the end of the day. But that, that seems pretty fair, right? It seems pretty fair if you're just analyzing it based off uh, diminishing gains. Now, friends, I'm going to go through the Ethereum target price soon of 7,300, okay? But the Bitcoin price feels safe to me as long as it's under 150K. And it would be sweet justice if the Jeets sell at 90K, but then FOMO back in at 200. That'd be lovely, lovely to see, all right? Now, either way though, don't bank or rely on 200K Bitcoin. Why? Because even if it does come, you don't know it's coming no pun intended, family friendly show. You don't know what's coming when Bitcoin's 155K. So you have to actually walk through time with me and we have to look at it here now, friends. We have to see, all right, the price goes up and up and up and up. Here you go, bang. See this period? Now you're sitting here. Are you going to hold everything? For, are you going to risk all of this move, a 70% drop? And you know Bitcoin drops 70, is going to drop 70% in this next bear market. So 70% drop would be all the way back down here to 45K. Now, here's the sad part. You can't tell me it can't go back to 45K when you and I both know the scamming that we just witnessed of 2022. We went back below the, below the all-time high. We did it before. Why can't we do it again? Of course, we can do it again. Okay. But at that point as well, what if the 200K happens? And then if you drop 70%, by the way, it comes back down to 60K at that point. So it really is all about risk reward, isn't it? It's about, okay, you stand in a certain, you know, it's calendar date and you're like, well, I don't know what happens next, but what happens if I lose everything from here? You know, we're going to try and match the time and everything, but I mean, you can only go so far. All we can do is speculate, friends. So it also makes you wonder while I play some nice like, gentle pump music just to fire everyone up. It's gonna make us wonder. Um, Soy Bankman Freed, how much of the customer funds was he dumping on us? Did he really cut off the bull market himself? We all know China was one of the big causes of the crash back then. But it, it's something interesting to speculate when you look at it here. Was the FTX customer all those funds being dumped? A lot of people do think uh, think he did that. You know, I mean, you never really get the the real answer, will you? But it is what it is. The market played out. And we had infinite QE, man. We had 0% rates, right? So we all know, though, the life-changing gains, friends, is coming in altcoins. That's pretty much it. And I think Bitcoin dropping 70% in that next bear market, It's that's actually pretty good if you're taking profit into Bitcoin. It's all right. It's better than like 95%. 
okay, which you'll find out later on. It's, it's going to be very, very painful when everything ends. But get, don't worry about the pain part. We're not even anywhere near the pain part, friends, because like we haven't had, um, we haven't had uh, anything like to show that we're euphoric. Also, I've scrolled down. I've seen Crypto Seven. This is much more like it. And a welcome pivot for you, friends. So, yeah, once again, friends, I know, I, know, look, I, I get it, man. I get it because I sit in the trenches here with you. Headlines easily grab. Do you remember when I when I said 80K to 100K Bitcoin, it's possible we get fully scammed. By the way, it's still possible. You know what I mean? You don't know. Um, remember, the intention was that we try, we, we strive to achieve better than what the crowd is expecting, All right? which means we've got to get in deeper. We gotta believe earlier. We gotta find the trend. We gotta get strong community altcoins. Not just picking Soylana, the chain, right? Because you get freaking jeeted on and dumped on by 999,000 coins. That's not good enough. So we wanted to just draw out a scenario where, you know what? If we're in early and we believe and it continues, if Bitcoin is stalling at 80 or 100K and the meme coins are flushed up, you win. All right. So that's what I want you to see. So, but these fib extensions, though, at this point in time, they're very, very, they're high confidence. It's just that, friends, what, what what I want you to think about is, look, man, what if Bitcoin is like 96K, but the other's BTC has flushed up for 100 days, which I'll show you now again, okay? This is the other's BTC ratio. What if Bitcoin, friends, by the time we get here, it's only like 95K? What are you going to do at that point? You'll be like, oh, crap. Now, historically... Bitcoin is never fully done yet, but in 2021, that point in time was 64K. It drops, comes back to exactly that point, double tops, and then it's over. So it's not like you get a continuation run for sure. Okay, so what I'm doing is we're just trying to map out how we walk through the future together and can we prepare for it now? Or really, you're already loaded up in altcoins. Everyone knows, right? You've got to get the strong community altcoins. You already know all the avenues, Twitter and YouTube and everything else. And yeah, pretty much everyone's trying to make these tech unicorn stuff. Well, they're all flunking. All of them are flunking. and Because retail want to make money. If you want retail to get excited, they want to make money. It's funny. That's why everyone came in crypto. It's funny. People, people just say like, oh, they're here for the tech. No, you're not, bro. You're here because you got rich. You understand? You're, you're still here. Yeah, you like the tech at the start. Why are you still here? You're still here because you made enough money from it. All these years later, if you were bleeding money from this, you would have been out a long time ago. And we all know it. It's just that they were able to book a lot of money that they could stay in. And now they're like, oh, why do all these retailers want to come in for celebrity coins? Oh, golly gee, I don't know. Maybe because uh, you made a lot of money and everyone else wants to make a lot of money. That's it. So you have to let it play out. Now, friends, let's talk about the Ethereum price target. And with Ethereum, friends, it's the same thing, right? We just draw a FIB level and actually show it to you right now as well. This is the other's BTC chart. We'll just go back to Ethereum's. And it's, it's it's pretty much the same thing. You draw a big fat FIB. If you want to know, right, by the way, I have turned off. This is important, right? I've turned off FIBs based on the log scale. So you can actually see it right now. This is important, right? If you, you remove it off, very important. We can actually just put a regular chart just to see. How much did Ethereum go in the last cycle? From the bottom to the top, it hit around the two to the three extension in between the box, as you can see. It hit around the two and the three. So what I did was I did I did the Fib level again, and if it hits between the two and the three and again, it's around that fourteen thousand dollar ETH. Man, I hope we get that. But if we diminish again, friends, we're going to be more between seven and eleven k. Okay, so that's why my target, I'm like, you know what? I'm very, very confident you got nothing to worry about below 7,300. What do I mean by you got nothing to worry about? In my eyes, if Ethereum is $7,000 or less, I'm not scared about any altcoin. None. Unless it obviously went absolutely hyperbolic, like, you know, the hit a billion market cap in such a short amount of time. Yeah, that's what I'm scared about. But most, you're not in stuff that happened. Okay, only, only a few people are. And they already had a Soylana season. A lot of them haven't even gotten out. But it is what it is, okay? For, for the most part, not scared whatsoever. I don't see that as froth. I don't see that as euphoria. Now, when we do go above 7,300, now we're in the unknown territory where I'm like, well, you know, technically, man, we're, it's euphoria now point. I don't know how long it's going to last for, how long it's going to go, but, you know, as long as you're basically, you're very sharp at that point. <clears throat> and as a summary, that's pretty much the worst case. So you can basically almost book that in. 
150k BTC, 7,500 ETH. It's around ETH BTC ratio 0.075. Of course, friends, you hope it goes more and more. But well, basically, I want to set like basically a horizontal line. We're like, all right, anything above that point, be on high alert. That's it. Okay. <laughs> There's no guarantee everything pumps up, right? Um, and we we obviously hope it repeats like the pre the past cycle, how far it went above. But it is what it is. Okay. Now. They are like 95% odds for me. And you're probably thinking, whoa, how can you be sure of 95% of anything? Yeah, man, this is literally a four-year cycle. We are in that small, small window of time where I'm like, oh, yeah, sweet. That's pretty much high odds. You know what I mean? And it looks like it's, oh, it looks like it's crazy. But they're not, it's not even, it's not target. It's just we're going there. That's what I, you know what I mean? That's not, we're topping out. Now I've got no idea. But yes, obviously, erring on the side of caution, friends, that's the most important part. And if you want to look at Vitalik's giant head with mine, right here, okay? So that's pretty much it. That's where we have to go. And a lot of magical things are going to happen there. You know, a lot of people believe that Soilana and Doge and every other coin is going to go up as well. Yeah, man, we're all going to go up. It's just a question of how much. Now, friends, I want to show you somebody who really believes in something. That's Ansem, okay? So if you remember Ansem, made two videos on him. He uh, he actually shouted me out. He basically, he, tried, he basically shat on me. It's fine, you know what I mean? But he just increased my network effect. Thank you very much. Um... Unfortunately, all the guys replying in his comment section, oh, man, you guys got f trucked. Man, what, there, was a, there was a Hobbs coin, Maxi. Oh, let me, let, me, let, me, let me show you. Oh, bro, like, by the way, if you're in Hex, there's actually a chart out here worse than Hex. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> My gosh. Hobbs, that's Ansem's cat. Uh, and, yeah, ugh, bro, I feel so, I feel so sorry for this guy. There was a guy who literally, he put like a third of his savings in. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. All right. I don't, I don't know how to help people like that because like you think you're a genius because you're following someone who's popular and the guy's like, yeah, man, hat stays on. Hat stays on. We're all going up, man. And I'm like, all right, bro. Yeah, well, uh, how's this? How's this looking for you? You know what I mean? Like, hmm. They have to learn the hard way, but it is what it is, bro. Like if you if if you really really think that's your claim to making it, remember I'm not talking to Ansem, I'm talking to all the people replying to him <laughs> in that comment section. They know who they are, man. He's got he's got truck now. Most fascinating part, friends. Let's read this. Fascinating news. Ansem has over 150 million US dollars made in crypto. He's carrying 15 million in dog with hat alone. And I'm actually going to show you. Have a picture out here. So this is from the Twitter. You guys can go through. There's a lot of gossip and drama. He said, she said. I think Kobe said in 2021 on up only after the top, he had that's eight figures. That's like over 10 million. It could be 10 or 20 million. Um, there is a zero chance that Ansem is not at over a hundred million dollars right now. And he's probably not even, and probably not low 90 million. So he's basically saying like, um, I'm probably not low a hundred million. Wow. He's almost thinking like this guy's like up at three to four to $500 million. They are crazy for thinking he needs celebrity tokens to make money. So there's been, He's been talking with a lot of celebrities and the celebs are usually like just poor C grade and they're just looking for a way to dump on people. But obviously it's not Ansem doing it, but I don't really know, man. I, I can't say anything. I don't have his addresses out uh, here. People, this, I'm just going off a lot of words. I don't actually check all of these. But it, um, everyone's trying to get adoption, friends, but celebs are just like, hey, it, it's look, it, it's got to meet in the middle. All right? You have a lot of desperate FOMO kids with the Soilana Jeep mentality. They're trying to front run the celebs, but they're getting dumped on and celebs are just dumping. And also the celebs have access to a lot of other people around the world to help bring more people into crypto. But they're clashing because the celebs are poor and they're just dumping on everyone immediately and there's insiders. But there's a lot of big potential out there. So eventually, maybe a celeb, maybe Iggy, maybe Iggy and her coin or anyone else is going to be able to take take control and like in terms of like take control of a community and really, really push it to new heights and just show what else can be done if they stick together, right? Um, this is one of his wallets. He's got $15 million, see on the right hand side, 15 million US dollars of dog with hat. All right, he's also got one and a half million dollars of mother Iggy, 750K of this coin, this 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 is dog shit. He, he, see, he bought it and then it went up 100X after he talked about it, him and then Arthur Hayes, then it dropped like 80%. Uh, he's got the GameStop, GME on there as well, American coin. I'm not even sure if these can be all be sold, but yeah, you get to see 600K of these. Um, but yeah, he's got 450,000 followers on Twitter. So he, yes, of course he did make a lot of money, but it also, a lot of people say, oh, uh, 
now that you're popular, there's like a popular snowball because like everything you tweet about keeps going up. But it is what it is, man. I mean, that's the whole freaking game. People talk about stuff and they keep going up. Your your goal with me, our goal is to try be early to stuff that other people will like. That's the whole thing about crypto. Just like Bitcoin. Your goal is to be early. Oh, I think a lot of people out there in the world really want to fix the money and fix the world. It's a meme. It's literally a freaking meme. It's not backed by men with guns or anything, friends. So let's continue as well. So, you know, as I mentioned here, people on Twitter shared one wallet of Antem's spare meme coin wallet. So that $20 million wallet I showed you, that's his spare one. His spare meme coin. <clears throat> and look, I don't know if he's taken profit or anything or whatever, just holding all these. But apparently other people have said at least there's $150 million out there sitting. They found one with $130 million of Soilana, just soul tokens. And, you know, he probably got ETH on other wallets and Bitcoin and a lot. So it's pretty much he's binked it out here, all right? So as you can see, all the meme coin wallets. So people cross-checked all these. You could only go for their words, but, I mean, it kind of makes sense. If he, if he made if he made 10 to $20 million in the last cycle and then he bought back Soilana and that was the unicorn winner, you know what I mean? There you go. That, that's pretty much how you, how you end up binking something like that, all right? Now... Ansem, though, he doesn't need to be pumping and dumping. Like, he's got $150 million, you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't need to make 10, 20K here. But, friends, like, he joined the Telegram once, just joining a Telegram, and the coin did 100X in a few hours. Just him joining the Telegram. Didn't say anything. Just joined it. And it went from 50K to 5 million market cap. So, just showing you how popular he is. So, I'm just going to show you his... Tw this is Telegram, okay? So, it's his Telegram. We've got 460K followers. He basically shot, shot, shot up. Now, a lot of people, though... Um, they're living through this scenario. So he's obviously a main character. He's like the biggest main character now. He's going out partying and stuff out here. You can see him in a couple of these. This is Antem here and everyone else out here. That's why everyone makes fun of these friends because this is preparing like a Soilana boat. And there's like literally just 3,000 dudes on this boat. He's typing out here. There's just so many of him out here. So, yeah, there's all these interviews out here. I listened to a few of the interviews. Um, and, yeah, so, look, there's a lot of things to learn about. And you're probably wondering, like, why why talk about the the a main character like that? You friends, you really, really, really got to understand this, all right? The main character, all right, there's no altcoin that's a unicorn here, but the main character is a unicorn. The main character, they and their, their way of thinking it's, it's like chosen by the market, all right? It's chosen by the market. If you ignore this, you are wasting a potential lottery ticket win yourself, your conviction in crypto. Let's go back to 2020. Richard Hart was the main character, all right? Um, his coins ended up smashing it. Du Quan, also a main character. Luna did 800x from the bottom to the top, all right? So Richard Hart did 10,000x. Now, of course, by the time you figure out their main character, yeah, you're not going to get the full move because you're not a real, real believer at the start, all right? There's many others we can go through. Charles Hoskinson as well, all right? So, but the most important thing to grasp is if they are a main character, so don't drink their Kool-Aid. I don't care who it is. Don't drink their Kool-Aid, but you just think, if they're a main character, what is that telling us about the demands of the people and the market. What can that share? What information and insights can that place for us? So why I'm bringing this unique perspective to you is most people will not look at it like that. 99.9% .9 of people, they're looking at that information and they go, let me go suck off the main character. That's what they're reading from it. I've obviously shown you thousands of examples, not thousands, dozens of examples where you follow the main character, you, you're dead. Pretty much dead. You saw what ended up happening to everything. Remember all the frog coins? There was Time Wonderland and a lot of things that happened in 2021, all right? Very important, okay? So there is key information though because if you go back in real time, friends, if we go back, like if you go back and just look at a chart here, like Ethereum, all right, you don't know what the hell's going on, all right, from this chart. You don't know. We This is ground field research that I'm here to tell you that Ansem being popular... Why is, he, why is he popular? Why? Now, obviously, he would say, oh, because I'm a mad trader and Soilana and stuff. Yeah, that's what most people, that's, that's like the one-dimensional uh, thing to look at. It. Okay. I don't think it's like that, friends. I think, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you like you, you create your own luck and all these other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's more like destiny. All right? I think 
it's more of the right place and the right time and the puzzle piece connects. And that's different to how other people think. Other people think it, it can all happen at any moment's notice, right? That's how they think. I'm thinking it's right place, right time. What does that mean? How, how I'm viewing it. What it means is I think the product market fit of this cycle was always always destined to be shit coins, meme coins. Because I believe the tech technology made by crypto VCs and stuff is subpar, suboptimal and trash, and they give themselves too many tokens. And I could see this path of like, wow, you just guys keep giving yourselves more tokens. I'm waiting for that Uniswap, waiting for that Uniswap, that unicorn, right, to be released. It's not coming, it's not coming, it's not coming. So it's like the market has said, well, since it's not coming, we've got to go in meme coins. And Soilana cater to very high transaction speed. So the market goes, you know what? Sweet. Here's all our product market fit. One million daily active users, which is on Soilana right now. All right. So, you know, the way I'm looking at it now, because remember, friends, what I've done is I went back in time and I'm like, how can I figure out how to smash it back in time? If I could go back in time, what information could I look at in the market, in the forest, to figure out what berries to eat? Because you obviously you would go back, friends, most people say, oh, I'd go back and buy this coin. No, but that's the, that's the wrong thing, man, right? You have to go back and think, what mindset did I need to win? What mindset? Interesting. Now, if you go back in 2020, what was your mindset? Your mindset was centralization bad, DeFi good, okay? And everybody who's making DeFi stuff and a better financial system, you end up winning. That was Richard Hart. That was Synthetics. That was Chainlink. That's Aave. You see what I mean? However, you can't just go back and just know all those coins. It's just, it's almost random. But you know, there's only a few to pick from, all right? So now we're looking at our period of time now. So that happened in the past. What's happening today though? We're seeing no great tech. Nothing that is allowing, what, what I mean by great? Great tech, friends, is, let's be honest, crypto, you're here to make money. So great technology lets retail make money, all right? It's, al it's almost like obvious when you think about it. How can retail make money? Okay, they get in early. Okay, how can they get in early? Like buy coins early at low market cap. Oh my gosh, there you go. Okay, start supplying them with all the coins, the meme coins, there you go. But everyone, all the VCs are like, no, let's make a billion dollar valuation thing. Let's make it like a trading game or let, let's make an application. Let's make a game. Let's make it this. Let's make them have fun and money's a side product. In crypto, friends, money comes first, the tech comes second. All right, and don't let any other poopy head with a hunch back in crypto convince you otherwise. <coughs> My <coughs> Pardon me, friends, had a coughing fit. <coughs> Money comes first. Money comes first. We all know what comes first. What, what does money mean, by the way? <coughs> money means increase your purchasing power. All right, so I know, when, don't think about like money from like a biblical perspective, like, oh, money bad. No, no, no. Increase your purchasing power. That's it. <clears throat> Increase your purchasing power and be able to hold it. All right. So that's the most important part. If Bitcoin could not increase your purchasing power from day one, we would have no industry. Same as Ethereum. <clears throat> we would have no industry. You know, if those stable coins could not at least hold your purchasing power in crypto, we would have no industry. So the number one thing is they've got to increase your purchasing power. Increase. All right. Now we know we're on the same page. And so what are people doing in retail uh, retail land, friends? They're coming in. They go, oh, I want to buy coins early. All right, sweet. You know when the, when the VC tech coins, they give themselves like, for example, paid launchpad. We had a failed auction pretty much, which is very, very, very bad for asymmetry finance. My gosh, they only raised $313,000 and it was an uncapped sacrifice raise. It's like Richard Hart raising $313,000 and he was expecting a billion, right? So it's literally like, whoa. So you get to see what's happening, right? Uh, people are learning, oh, I don't want to get a fully grown tree and throw it in my backyard. I want to keep throwing seeds on the floor and watering them. That's what I want. That's basically buying coins early. Crypto lets you buy coins early. It's funny, all the VC guys, <clears throat> all the tech coins, they don't let you get in early. They, they mint the coins up at 100 million market cap, 800 million, and they don't let you get in early. But, you know, I mean... <laughs> 
the, their logic is that, oh, well, Doge went to 85 billion last market cap. So anything under 1 billion for us is cheap. That's what they basically say. But hey, the market doesn't work like that, does it? So how is this all going to resolve itself, friends? Ultimately, the market will decide. Will they keep buying meme coins or will VC tech founders release cheap coins to the market for once? You tell me, man. I don't know. <clears throat> can I tell you something, though? We can actually see it on Pulse Chain. Uh, fame, which is literally a utility coin where there's people gambling in the casino, leverage trading, and then their fees get paid basically to the token. Um, it's down. I haven't checked up recently. Last time I checked, it was like 10 million market cap-ish. And meme coins are growing bigger than that. So the market's not buying it, man. It's literally not buying it. It's, it, it, it knows, man. It, people, they know. Now, here's the thing. Even though it's cash profitable, aren't you curious? Like, why aren't people buying these things up if they're not cash profitable? It's because people know, even though you make profit today, we don't trust that you will survive a bear market when the volumes go down. We don't trust that. And you don't blame them for not trusting that because they have three examples and a th so three examples of cycles and a thousand plus coins of this playing out. So the market said, you know what, you making cash flow today is actually not enough. We we want a lot more. Is is that wild to think about? Basically, the market's got so much PTSD, but you can't argue with them. You can't argue with them. By the way, you know they're right. Are you friends? Are you gonna hold onto your poopy coins even though it's cash flow profitable in a bear market? Uh-uh, you know no one's coming to save you. So, yeah, back to Ansem, friends. It's very important to note Ansem has always been publicly sharing every trade and coin thesis he's been in since the start. And how I interpret all these is, like I said, I see, all right, this was always going to be a meme coin cycle. Now, I did not know that years ago. No one pretty much knew that, but it's just, that, that's predestined, right? It was always going to be a meme coin cycle. And just so happens, Soyana caters to that the whole time. You could also look at it another way. This is a myopic view, but you know, it is what it is. It's almost like the tech innovations failed in this cycle. We had Bitcoin in 2012, the forking. We had Ethereum in 2016. We had Uniswap in 2020. <clears throat> what was the magic unicorn? There is none. It's meme coins. Okay. So that's pretty much it. So that's where we are today. All right. And a lot of people, friends, they're going to be salty because, you know, there are a hundred possible narratives, but Soylana has won the game. And remember though, for every one winner, for every one Ansem, there's 99 dead bodies. And I really do mean dead bodies. Okay. That, that tried it. All right. So, and also look at these stats, friends. Out of the top 300 coins, Soylana, BNB and Injective won the game on recovery. The bottom 297 coins didn't. So it was literally a tiny 1% chance to get it. You see how that's really, that's how low the odds are of you picking it. I know those coins are the ones that smashed up through the highs. Everything else is still suffering in poop town, right? And um, also interesting to note for you, everyone who wins at the game, so every person who's picked Soylana so far, if you talk to them, they'll say it was the most obvious thing ever. It was the obvious thing ever. It was always going to work. They'll say that. But... I guarantee you, they are going to really miss the next cycle and the next narrative. I guarantee you that. This happened every single time. They're going to miss it. And they're going to miss it so much when people say, you've fallen off the edge, you've fallen off the edge, you're not the king anymore. They're going to then start to talk about their old wins. Oh, I made 20x off this, I made 50x on this, I made 50 million on this. They're going to start like talking about their own results from the past. That shows you it's really, really over. All right. Also interesting, in recent Ansem interviews that I listened to, he said he went to the conferences of Soylana in, in 2021 and 2023. And so he had an information asymmetry with regards to Soy Bankman Fried's involvement. He mentioned that Soy Bankman Fried was not as big a uh, part of Soylana as the market thought. So all the believers held on. This honestly, this does remind me of Pulse Chain, where we have information asymmetry as well. We literally saw on chain, oh, the market doesn't think. Richard Hart's going to rotate the ETH in, even though he's literally broadcasted and actually did it. We're like, bro, there's not even any guessing at this point, you know, but they still don't think so. They still don't think so. Information asymmetry, right? It's just how long are you willing to hold? That's another thing, right? I'm still willing to hold. Um, and obviously, Ethereum's price isn't even there. So when it gets to 10K, we'll see. And as I always say, friends, invest for the world in a year from now. You don't invest based off what it looks like today. 
Okay, so what will that mean? Okay, you're going to keep buying meme coins? Yeah, but which ones? Are you going to keep buying based off the fact that Soylana is the strongest now? Hmm. I'll tell you one thing now. You think every other chain in crypto isn't looking at Soylana's fast transactions and looking to copy-paste it? You think, you think that's not going to happen? Of course it's going to happen, friends. Well, you think you're the only fast transaction in blockchain that's ever going to exist in the world? You wait and see. They're all going to copy paste. And then you're just going to have fast transactions everywhere. And what's left? The community, right? You need the community. So that's most important. And so the current crypto environment, well, I'll play some nice gentle angel music just to soften it for everyone, friends. Very, very soft chocolate pudding for you. The environment is currently torn up in two. <clears throat> Soylana has had big product market fit with 1 million users who are minting and trading meme coins all day. And they have friends, the tiniest lifespans of all time. Like, bro, they're all 24 hours. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, far out. Like, where are your balls, man? You can't hold anything. Okay. And Ethereum, on the other hand, though, the transaction speeds are too low. All right. It's, it's way too slow. It's like a Pentium 2 computer back in the day. Right. It's, it's just too slow. And it has to be upgraded. It's going to take time. But you got to think, what are the fast transactions actually used for? Okay, trading shit coins. Well, what if you actually don't need to trade them all the time because you keep losing? What if you just got to like buy and hold? You ever thought about that? Let's see what happens next, right? What happens next? I even have it here. I remember also Ethereum's model of the layer twos. Questionable now, right? It looks like, look, it's, it's going to upgrade over time, but how fast? So Soylana's eating their lunch with the fast stuff. But then look at the fast transaction stuff that Soylana lets you do. Oh, now we just trade shit coins. <laughs> What's the fast stuff? But then again, it's it's like a it's like the the city problem where you have not enough roads and then you build roads and people start to decide to drive on there. So it's like the bandwidth as well for the internet. If you just expand what's capable, people come and fill up the spaces. Okay, so what do I think though? I think what happens next, friends, I think the meme coin renaissance we just saw in Soylana, I think it's a key indicator, right? So I'm looking at Ansem and his partying lifestyle and his spirit of like, like I don't want to get into personal stuff, friends, but apparently like it's family stuff. Like he has, he's, he's got a child, he's a father and he's going out partying. So that's a persona that everybody's like raising up as well. And obviously don't worry about, don't judge anyone, but it's just, it isn't interesting that, Soylana, like the fast transaction stuff with all the Jeters and the casino stuff and the tw and the celebrities. Um, he's also the champion main character and he's got like the movie trailer about him playing out. Remember, friends? And Sam this is it, the friends. the main character of crypto. He now has a trailer out. So I think... A trailer. Look at this. After this part, they obviously... <laughs> they look at all him partying and stuff with all the babes. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, he just made $150 million. So, like, yeah, yeah, hat stays on. Hat stays on. It's part of all these babes and stuff. So, it is interesting, right? It all kind of, like, moves in towards that celebrity meme coin stuff. I wonder if Richard Hart, like, fighting against the system, anti-establishment, real DeFi, I wonder if that will have its own narrative, its own edge. That's why I think it will happen. It's just about how popular would it be. So, I know it's going to happen. It's just like, okay, is it, is it worth... 100 billion valuation, 300 billion valuation, or just 30 billion. They're very, very different outcomes for the world of how these things will play out. All right. So it's interesting, though. You look at all of this. What I've given you, basically, friends, is like a, a real 4D snapshot of what's actually going on in crypto. And the main character we're now putting up is like, okay, the party dude, you know, the party dude made 150 mil, believed, you know what I mean, and gone around, um, championing Soylana's approach, which is one chain. Let's do all of it, okay? That's interesting. Um, though, <clears throat> look at the coins going forward, though. They Look at all the other chains and all the other coins while Soylana went up. Strong coins on other chains that didn't have a narrative still went up. They still went up. Pulse Chain, Avalanche, Corridanza, all this, the stuff that were meme coins this and Telegram, yeah, things that are meme coins, they went up with Soylana too. It's just that Solana went up the most. She's showing you that these things have product market fit everywhere. So I think, though, the speculation and the meme coins and altcoins, obviously, I think, I know it's going to continue. We're going to up the ante for memes as people come in, and it's going to get probably more fun 
fun, right? And then more catastrophic. Until, unless someone, which is what we're waiting for, releases a technology unicorn application, you know, like a Uniswap level. But the thing is, man, remember, friends, Bitcoin, you could fork it and everyone could buy it and make money. All right. Then 2016, Ethereum, anybody could launch an ICO. So you could buy the tokens and make money, make 100x on all ICOs. You see that? You see the theme of making money? All right. What about 2020? Okay, Uniswap. Anybody can launch a token, make a food Ponzi thing. You can buy it, make money. Three out of three times, what's the common theme? Making money for retail. Three out of three. Now, it all ends up in T's, but you get the point. Three out of three times, friends. So what's this fourth one? It's Soilana. Okay, anybody can now launch a fast meme shit coin and everything. Okay, you can buy and make money. Is there another competition out here to it? I haven't seen it so far. Where are the applications to let people mint tokens and make money to be early? Where are they? They aren't there yet. They're trying to make these user applications. It's like funny. Uh, I mean, it's interesting though. The more people try to run away from the fact that everyone here in crypto is just for, to make money, the more stupid they look, really. They look really, really silly because it's very, very obvious. Everyone's here to make money. The whole thing's about making money. It really is, friends. And and once we grasp it, which is what we have, that's what we're grasping, like, you know everyone's desperate to retire. I'm getting messages every day, friends. Check my Telegram. Check my Telegram. Read all your comments, friends. You're all desperate to retire. Good. Good. You know why that's good? Because I know every time I read one of your comments about how desperate you are to retire, I know I can multiply that by 1,000 all the way out there in the crowd. I know. They're real desperate. And you know what desperate people do? Once things start moving, they go really, really hard. And guess what? They don't even want to sell. They don't want to sell when it goes up. Because what's if, what if that's the retirement ticket? And that, my friends, is the key to our bull market. Unless something comes and takes a turn, I guess we'll find out. Like, subscribe, Billy, by Nor. Catch you soon.